Hello everybody, good morning, Jill here. I want to talk to you this morning about a real hero uh, of mine. Um, he is called George Muller. Now, George Miller was born over 200 years ago. Uh, so I've never met him. I've only read about him and heard about him. And he was, in fact, he was born in a country that doesn't exist anymore. He was born in a place called Prussia. Now, why is George such a hero of mine? Well, well, George and his wife had a real passion for helping children, particularly orphans, so children who didn't have any parents. And he started off with their house. Now, I don't know how many people live in your house, but he took in 30 children all to live in his house. And then he wanted to look after more children. So they rented another house down the street and another house and another house. And before they knew it, they had to build a whole building, an orphanage to look after these children. Now, this is a place in Bristol. Um, and eventually it was big enough that they had 1,700 children there. Now, what was interesting was that George and his wife, they never asked anyone for any money to help them with this. And they didn't have much money themselves. They didn't get any money from the government. What they did was they prayed and people gave the money. They didn't have to ask, people just donated money to them. And so prayer was really important to George. Looking after the children was really important and relying on prayer and asking God to provide everything they needed. Now to build this orphanage would have cost more than a hundred thousand pounds, which is a lot of money now, but it would have been loads of money then. But prayer is what kept him going. And even once the orphanage was built, he still needed money for food and to keep the children fed and warm and everything. And so lots of times they had to rely on prayer. There was one time where they didn't even have any breakfast and they prayed every morning, just like you do when you have um, your school dinners, they would pray a thank you to God for their breakfast. So they started praying, even though there was no breakfast in front of them. And by the time they had finished their prayer, there was a knock, knock, knock at the door and the local baker was there with enough bread to feed everyone. And then the milkman came along and he gave them all the fresh milk that he had because his milk cart had just broken down outside the orphanage. Other times they had problem with boilers stopping working and needing the weather to change and they prayed and the weather changed or having a problem with their drains deep down in the ground and they prayed and they were able to find the problem straight away. There was even a time when George was on a boat crossing over the Atlantic to America and really needed to get there at a certain time and a heavy fog had come down so the boat had to go slow and George went to the captain and asked to be shown the route and he prayed for the fog to clear and the fog lifted and he was able to get there in time. So I love George for many reasons. I love his faithfulness uh, that God will provide and that he will really put his faith in God through prayer. I also love I also love his commitment to helping the children. By the time he died, when he was 92, over 10,000 orphans had um, lived in his orphanages. And he set up schools as well, over uh, 100 schools and 120,000 children were able to benefit from a free education that they wouldn't have had otherwise. So I love the fact that he wanted to basically make this really big family. You know, it didn't matter that he wasn't related to these orphans. He felt like he should be helping them. And I think a lot of that had to do with his belief in God. Because as when you believe in God, you become part of God's family. And so there are a whole billion people in the world who feel that way too, who have that belief. And we are part of God's family. One of my favourite songs to sing when I was your age, still is now, uh, it's called Father God I Wonder and it has a line in it that says, and now I am your child, I am adopted in your family and I can never be alone because Father God you're there beside me. 
Our families can be difficult, can't they? Sometimes our families get on really well, sometimes they don't. Sometimes you go apart, sometimes new families join together. But the point that God wants to make is that it doesn't matter who your family is on earth and whether they're great or terrible, you can be part of God's family. And even Jesus said the same. Did you know Jesus had brothers and sisters as well? And one time his family went to, to see him with the crowds because they were a bit, um, I think, a bit embarrassed. They thought Jesus lost the plot. What's he doing? Saying all these things, healing these people. And they called for the people inside. They said, send Jesus out. His family are here. And so they said, Jesus, Jesus, your family are outside. And he said, well, who is my family? My family is here. The people sat around listening to me. I, the people that he felt connected to because they were believing what he was saying. And so to remind you of that and how you can be a part of God's family, I have a little craft for us today. So in celebration of being part of God's family, I have a little crafty activity for us to do. What we need is a square piece of paper like this. We're going to fold it like a triangle. We're going to fold it again and fold it again. So you've got it like this. And then I'm going to draw two people on it. Uh, it doesn't have to be particularly good drawing. But the key thing is that their hands are linked together and their hands are going to go to the edge of the paper. So you want, I don't know if you can see this. Yeah, there you go. You want it to look like this. So hands, not very good, I know, but head, head, hands going to the edge of the paper and hands touching and then just the feet here. And then I'm going to cut this out. There you go. Now, while I cut this out, I'm going to tell you about my gotcha day on Friday. It was quite exciting. We, the Jones family, we extended our family a little bit, sort of, with our gotcha day for a girl called Alison. Alison lives in Bolivia. Um, but we have sponsored Alison. She's eight years old. We sponsored her through a charity called Compassion. And what Compassion do with the money that we're able to send is make sure that Alison uh, goes to school, has books, pens, papers, gets all the uh, medicine, vaccination she needs, that she can go to a church, learn about God and know that she's part, a little bit of the part of the Jones family, but most importantly, that she is part of God's family. So we are excited to welcome Alison into our extended family. And we will hopefully find out from her a little bit about what it's like to live in Bolivia. So I might share some of that info with you. Does anyone know where Bolivia is? Hmm. It is in South America. So you look it up on the map later. Maybe look up what George Muller looks like as well. Muller. Oh, hang on, legs. Okay, so I have cut out my little people. Here we are, just like that. And now, gently open it up. And open it up. And there we are. How lovely. I can, you can colour this in and this will remind you, this will remind you that, oh, opens up even more, there we are, that if you want to follow God, you can be a part of God's family with all the other Christians in the world, another billion more people who also follow God. And that, as I said in the song, I will never be alone because, Father God, you're there beside me. Brilliant. Have a little go at making those. Find out about George Muller. He spells it with a U, L-L-E-R. And uh, find out about Bolivia. And I will see you guys again soon.